morning. We've been talking about the Beatitudes, right? The Beatitudes of Jesus, they're recorded in Matthew's Gospel, the fifth chapter. It's the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount. It's the very first thing that, whoops, yeah, take me back one, I can't, there we go. It's the very first um, big teaching that Jesus has at the beginning of his ministry, and the very first word out of his mouth with this very important message, this very important sermon, is the word blessed, blessed. And I know Pastor Jason's been talking about it. Pastor Don, I think, was here one week, too. Uh, this is my first time during this series. But when Jesus said blessed and the people that he was talking to, in that society at that time, they would not have been seen, if you will, as the blessed people. All right? Most of the people that he was talking to were not in well, not most, all of them were not in the high society. They weren't rich. They didn't have the things that at that time and even today that a lot of people would consider to be blessed by. But Jesus is teaching them and he's, he's unfolding. He's beginning to plant the seeds for what he's going to be teaching in the years to come before he goes to the cross about what it is to be part of God's kingdom. And he, and he says these statements that are so important and so profound, and it's important that we take some time uh, to reflect on them as well. So before we do that, let's just say a quick prayer. Lord God, as we dig into this beatitude today about being merciful, I pray that your Holy Spirit would help each of us in our own way uh, consider how you are calling us to be merciful in our lives, even as you have been merciful to us. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Neil read the lesson, and it's a powerful story about this uh, gentleman who owned a lot of slaves, and, and one of his slaves that said owed him 10,000 talents. Does anybody have a clue or do you want to take a guess on how much 10,000 talents in that time would be worth today, approximately? $10 million? Not quite a trillion, but a lot more than 10 million. About $6 billion. About $6 billion. And so this slave, you know, he goes to the Lord, his Lord, he says, small L, uh, slave owner, and he, you know, and he's, he's going to get thrown in jail. He's going to be, well, he's going to get sold along with his family and possessions in order for the owner to get back a little bit. And then he what? He begs for mercy, right, and forgiveness. He's begging for mercy and forgiveness. And what does the owner do? He says, all right. He, he hears the plea for forgiveness, for mercy. And what does he do? He says, right, I'll forgive you. And so now the guy who's just been forgiven $6 billion leaves and runs into one of his friends who owes him what? A hundred denarii. And take a guess what that would be worth approximately today. About $10,000. So, he was forgiven six billion. He runs into somebody who owes him ten thousand, who also asks him for forgiveness. And what does he say? No, not going to do it. Not going to do it. And what happens? He gets reported <laughs> back to the owner, and the owner said, "I can't believe it. I forgive you so much, and you refuse to give." so little. And Jesus said, basically, you better hear about this. You better learn about this. And obviously, the statement being that we understand in our lives that how much have we been forgiven by God through Jesus Christ? Everything, right? And so what are we supposed to do? Forgive as well. I could stop right there, but I won't. Because, you know, we've got to unpack some more. So let's look at this. 
Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Now, I'm having mercy on you this morning because it's really hot outside, and it's going to get hotter, and all the slides have snow in the background. So that, that just a little Christmas present for you. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. I want to read something to you. Got to get my glasses on. Phone out. Because I wanted you to know... The word mercy, 2,000 years ago, when Jesus spoke it, the translation, the Bible was originally you know, written in uh, New Testament Greek. And so what did it mean when Jesus said mercy? Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So the Greek word for mercy can be summed up in a couple of ways. One of the biggest ways is compassionate kindness. Compassionate kindness. The term ilios, which is the Greek word, conveys a deep sense of compassion and kindness towards others, especially those who are suffering or are in need. It also means active compassion. It implies an action-oriented compassion, not just a feeling of pity, but taking steps to alleviate the suffering of others. Have mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And one of the other places that we obviously see that is in the parable of the Good Samaritan, which is how this church got its name in Matthew 18. But then also in the reading that Neil read from Matthew 18, Jesus teaches that mercy involves forgiving others, even as we've been forgiven by God. And throughout the Gospels, Jesus' acts of healing, feeding the hungry, and associating with the marginalized reflect this compassion, comprehensive view of mercy, compassionate kindness, and active compassion as well. So let's look at this a little bit more with that understanding of mercy. So... One of the places we have to begin, again, it's in your sermon outline, is that we, as God's people, as Christians, understand that we have been the recipients of mercy, right? You're gathered together as God's people in this place today as people who have received mercy. And Paul writes about that in Ephesians 2. Let's read together. If you can see it, it's also in your bulletin. But God's mercy is great, and he loved us very much. Though we were spiritually dead because of the things we did against God, he gave us new life with Christ. You have been saved by God's grace. We are recipients of God's mercy. We've received mercy, and that sets, this sets the stage. If we've received God's mercy, then we are already blessed. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Well, we've received mercy from God, right? We're blessed by that. But because we're blessed by it, and because of what else Jesus teaches beyond the uh, beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, then we have to dig in a little bit more about how do we show mercy? How do we show mercy? Um... Let me tell you a story. It gets to what Neil read in, in the gospel lesson today, believe it or not, and it's about politics, forgive me. But I used to be a politician. Lord have mercy. Um, and he did. <laughs> when, I was, when I ran for office, and if you've heard this story before, forgive me, but show mercy. Um, it was 1984, a long, long time ago. And I was, I'm trying to do the, uh, it was back in North Dakota. I've got to do the Reader's Digest version. But basically, in, in the party I was a member of, they promised things to me if I would run against an incumbent office holder, somebody who was already in office, all right? Well, the governor at that time uh, called me and he said, and he said, or excuse me, the senator that I had worked for, not the governor, the senator called me and he said, they're probably not going to do what they say they're going to do. So don't run. 
but I didn't listen to him. And I did run, and I found out that he was right. That what they promised me, I didn't get. And so after I had, after the election had taken place, the senator called me, and he said, why don't you come back to work for me again? And I did. And again, Reader's Digest version, I hope this makes sense. But one day the phone rang, and it was the chairman of the political party who had made promises to me, and they said, we're kind of running out of money, and we know the senator has a lot of money in his, in his uh, campaign war chest. Would he give us some? And I said no and hung up. <laughs> and then I called him in Washington, and I said, I think I just kind of blew it. But here's what I did. I told him what I did, and he said, good job. <laughs> About six months later, I realized that um, I lost, by the way. <laughs> um, uh, about six months later, I realized that I was very bitter. Um, I was very resentful. And I realized that where it was coming from was the fact that I tried to get even instead of forgiving. Because there are times in life, right, where people do things to us, promise things to us, right, that hurt us. And we have a choice, right? We can either be bitter or we can get better. And the way we get better is by what? Showing mercy. By forgiving. Now, I, you know, I was a Christian. I knew what God's word said, and yet I didn't do what God's word said. And because I wasn't doing what God's word said, I was not in a good place. Now, I also knew if I picked up the phone and called the former chairperson of the political party and said, I forgive you, they'd probably say, what for? <laughs> uh, so I didn't even call because I'm not sure they thought they did anything wrong, but I literally had to, I forgave them so that I could move on. And I went from being bitter to getting better. All right. Now, I'm just planting that seed about that story because my guess is, when I say that, you don't have to raise hands. Some of you have people that maybe you haven't forgiven yet. Okay? Let's go a little more. If you can read it, again, it's in your bulletin. Luke, Jesus says, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. If God is merciful, if God has forgiven us, if God has done for us what we know he's done for us through Jesus on the cross and his resurrection, if God has shown us mercy, then how can we say we're not going to? Blessed are the merciful, for they shall be shown mercy, Jesus says. Hosea in the Old Testament, look at this one. Now, there's different translations. I just took this translation. There's all different you know, kinds of translations. Read this with me. God is speaking. I want you to show mercy, not offer sacrifices. One of the pastors I was listening to in preparation for uh, my message today said, God would rather have you show mercy than worship him. God would rather have you show mercy to people than worship him. Because I, and, and I kind of get that because if we're going to have hard hearts and unforgiving hearts, then how can we properly come to worship? The one who's forgiven us, right? I want you to show mercy and not offer sacrifices. Proverbs has wise things to say. Let's read it together. A merciful person helps himself, but a cruel person hurts himself or herself right? So when we show mercy, and that's exactly what happened in my life with that story I told you, I helped myself when I showed mercy because I wasn't in a good place. 
But I got in a better place with God's help when I showed mercy. And then let's, and there's just three ways. I've talked about some, but let's look at some other ways to show mercy. Again, I hope it's keeping you cool with the snow up there. Um, Ephesians 4.2, let's read it and then talk about it. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. What's one way to show mercy in the first line? Be patient. Is that easy? Not all the time. Not all the time, but it is a way of showing mercy, being patient with each other. Sometimes that's really, really difficult. Um, it can be really, really difficult in a relationship. It can be difficult in the family. It can be difficult with our kids. It can be difficult in the workplace. It can be difficult when we go shopping and we're dealing with customer service people. It can be, it, it can be difficult at church. But what does God's word say? It says, be patient with each other. And what should we do? Make allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Everybody has quirks and faults and things, Right? Even us, even me, just ask my wife. But God's word says, be patient with each other. Have some mercy. Have, have some open kindness, compassionate kindness is what the word means. Jesus is calling us to be merciful. Um, and then let's look at this one. Whenever you possibly can, do good to those who need it. When? Whenever you possibly can. Do good. That's that uh, mercy that is kindness in action, right? It isn't just having pity and going, oh boy, I'm you know, look at that poor person. I really feel sorry for him. That's a nice thought. But the mercy that Jesus is talking about is what? actually now doing something about it as well. It's one of the reasons why we have a lot of service. The, the kids who are going on beach camp, one of the days they're on beach camp, they're doing a service project. Natalie, who shows up in those videos a lot, and she's been here and, and, and shared the message, uh, feels strongly, as we do as pastors too, that we have to serve others because Jesus served others and he served us. And so the, part of what they do is not just go to the beach, not just go to Knott's Ferry Farm, but one day is they go serve people. They help people. Because whenever you can do good, it's a good thing to do. And we're showing mercy on people. There are so many ways that we can show mercy. You know what? We, we had fun making that little video about the peanut butter wars. But when you give dollars or bring peanut butter for the peanut butter wars, what are you doing? You're showing mercy. You're giving towards people who need some help. Um, it, you know, it, it gets hard in a big city because sometimes you don't know. Uh, you know, there might be somebody out in the street asking for money, right? And you're stuck there. And... Or, you know, you're stuck in traffic, and now do I give them something or don't I? Anybody ever ask that question besides me? Um, I don't carry as much cash as I used to because we don't use cash as much. I've been trying to convince some of them they should get a QR code or, a, you know, or whatever. It'd be a lot easier. But, um, but I, you know what? I don't know if I'm getting scammed or not. But who does know? God knows. And so I think it's more about my heart than whether or not they're scamming me. And whenever I possibly can, do I always do it? No, I don't always have cash, but some, you know, and then if I've got my son with me, I want to do it because I want to teach him how to show some mercy, how to help somebody who might be in need. Um, there are so many ways, but... Brothers and sisters in Christ, I think, you know, in Jesus, again, think about it. In Matthew 5, Neil read from Matthew 18, so later in Jesus' ministry, he, he's, he's planting the seeds on that Sermon on the Mount with his disciples and everybody who's gathered around. And he's planting the seed of, of saying that 
the what I'm teaching you is different than what's happened before. And it's different from what you've heard before. And you're going to be blessed when you show mercy. That doesn't mean you're going to get a new Mercedes. It doesn't mean you're going to, but you're going to have this, this better feeling in your heart, this spiritual contentment in your heart, because you know that when you do good acts, when you're kind, when you're compassionate, when you're showing mercy towards others, that's exactly what Jesus did for us. And sometimes, you know, we've got to talk about stuff like that because sometimes we want to help people who are just like us or we, you know, we're, again, we can be very judgmental, but there is nothing in God's word that says that that's how we're supposed to act. We're just supposed to help. We're just supposed to love. We're just supposed to care. We're supposed, and, and well, Pastor Scott, it sounds like, you know, you're just going to let people, you know, roll over, roll over for other people. Um. What, what was, um, blessed are the meek. I didn't do the sermon here. I heard Pastor Jason's though, and we said similar things was um, the word for meek, the Greek word for meek was strength under control. All right? So I'm meek, I have strength under control, and now I show mercy. Right? I'm going to put them all together. And so I have strength under control, and I can show mercy. I'm not going to get bowled over by somebody, but I'm going to show mercy as Jesus, who was strong under control, did for all of us. I hope this makes sense. And, and, I, and I hope that more than just making sense, I'm really going to ask you to think about and pray about how and to whom do you need to show some mercy? You don't have to tell me. But my guess is all of us have someone at least that maybe we haven't shown mercy to that we need to. Not because maybe they deserve it, but because God's word calls us to do it. Jesus calls us to do it. The person that offended me didn't know they needed mercy, but I needed to show mercy. Maybe you do too. Why should you do it? Because God has shown you mercy. That, there's really no better reason than that. The story Jesus told, the guy owed $6 billion and was forgiven, but wouldn't forgive a little bit in comparison. How much have you been forgiven? Everything. How much should you forgive? Let's pray. Lord God, <sighs> sounds like such a simple little phrase, blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. <sighs> but it's so hard for us to do. Because we'll go, yeah, but you don't understand. They, when they said that, it really hurt my feelings. Or when they did this, it, it, yeah. But yet, what we've done that has been forgiven um, is something we probably don't always think about as much rather than seeking revenge or getting back at somebody. Help us to be merciful, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit tug at our hearts so that we do show kindness, we show compassion, we show all those things that we're called to show, and we do what Jesus has asked us to do. And when we do, we're going to be blessed, and we pray in your name. Amen.